Today's vlog is not a tutorial. In fact, there's no art in it at all. So if you're an artist, perhaps skip on to the next one. It's an absolute cracker of a day. So I'm heading out to the studio. I'm gonna work on the Wicker Man a little bit. It's safe. Morning. So, a couple of people who've watched my videos have been asking what this sign is behind me in the films. In 2008, Mrs S was running an autism unit in Darlington, and they moved into a brand new school, which sounds great. Unfortunately, there was no play facilities or outdoor play facilities for the autism unit. They had a tarmac Essentially a cage. It was horrible. You've seen the things, those big green wire fences that go around schools these days. There's no way that anybody could play in this barren environment. We were horrified. We need to build a playground. And she said, there's no money. And I was so cross. I said, right, I'll raise the money. So I found out where Hans Asperger, who developed theories on autism and, and Asperger's, was born. It turned out that Vienna was the place. So I just bought a bike. So this is the bike that I rode to Austria on in 2008. It's the bike I ride to work. I came to the studio on it this morning and it's had very few changes. It had narrower tyres to make it faster. And uh, I had tri bars on here, which gets you out of the wind and can put you know, quite a bit of speed onto you. Five miles an hour makes a huge difference. Then I thought, okay, well, I'll cycle to Vienna from Darlington to raise the money. <laughs> God. 1,500 miles. Two dear friends then and now, they had a, a motorhome, so they said that they would be the support crew and, and follow me. So then there were loads of planning meetings about the route. So the route, Humber Bridge, Lincoln, Boston, Harwich, across to Rotterdam, Dortrecht, Nijmegen, Dusseldorf, Cologne, Koblenz, Mainz, Ansbach, Regensburg, Straubing, Degendorf, Passau, Linz, Krems, Klosterneuburg and Vienna feeding and you know the whole nutrition thing the day that i left darlington was sunny friends turned up to see me off and all of the children came out of the school and waved and cheered and um, i felt great so we were on our way south it was exciting the walls hull and the humber bridge where i saw a rag and bone man with a cart over the humber bridge into lincolnshire flat and it started raining and the wind picked up on and on and on. It was horrendous. Rain pouring down my neck and filling my shoes. Suffolk to Harwich. And they wouldn't let us on the ferry until the next morning. So we sat in pouring rain in the motorhome thinking how miserable it was. <laughs> Next morning, the ferry took us to Rotterdam. We spent the night not far from there. And then the journey across Holland. The Dutch were superb. Just such lovely people. The food improved. <laughs> <laughs> we hit the Rhine and continued down through Germany. Eventually the sun did come out and we sat and drank beer and uh, mostly Italian food. The food in Germany was appalling. They like beaten out pieces of pork covered in breadcrumbs or something. I don't know. It was just bloody awful. <laughs> so no, no matter how well you plan these things, something sometime is inevitably going to go wrong. Firstly, there'd been so much water on the way through England and into Holland that by the time I got near the German border, the bottom bracket on my bike seized up. The, wa the water had washed all of the grease out of the bottom bracket, so I had to book it in, and this chap, Arnold, fixed it for me. But these things take a while. When we got to Dusseldorf, Phil and Jenny and I found ourselves on opposite sides of the Rhine. They were in a campsite somewhere. I had no idea where that was. They didn't know where I was. All of the bridges look exactly the same across the river and it was getting dark. I didn't have any lights on the bike and I'd already done well over 100 miles and I was getting tired and cold and hungry. And then my phone ran out of battery. <laughs> So now I'm in a foreign country, lost, with no way of communicating with anyone. I cycle up and down the tracks at the side of the Rhine, looking for the campsite, but just can't find it. I begin to panic. Eventually I found two lovely people who were kind enough to let me use their phone 
to phone Mrs S in England, who then phoned Phil and Jenny in Germany to let them know where I was. My God, it was a trying evening, I can tell you. Then when I got to a place called Gren, I was hit by a truck. <laughs> and, um, so I was taken to hospital where I was x-rayed and all kinds of tests done. It turned out that it was just severe bruising and I was bandaged up and, and sent back. Uh, there were two young lads in the ambulance, Marcus and Dominic, who were absolutely brilliant. I think they were conscripts. You know, the, um, I think you have to be in the army for a certain period of time or you can work uh, with the ambulance service or that kind of thing. And that's what they were doing. But they were excellent. They had no idea what they were doing. <laughs> but such nice people. So Marcus and Dominic, thanks guys. On a smaller scale, uh, punctures were a constant feature of the ride. Sometimes I had as many as four in a day. Either Phil or Phil and I would spend our time outside, usually in the rain, um, trying to fix them. It's part of the fun. <laughs> Despite the mishaps, I did eventually make it to Vienna. Well, I say made it early. I stopped in a place called Klosterneuburg, which is uh, just outside Vienna. Uh, met Chris and Lucy, who arrived on their motorbike. There was a group of friends also arriving by plane to meet me. So we stayed in Klosterneuburg for a couple of nights and then did the ceremonial ride into, into Vienna, where we had uh, a couple of days, mostly partying actually. We um, toured the city and visited restaurants and uh, bars, found some really nice places and enjoyed it immensely. I think in the end, uh, the ride raised somewhere around 12,000 pounds to build the sensory playground, which we did. And money kept coming in for a little while after that too. So I think in the end, it was about 15,000 pounds. And the sensory playground was wonderful, full of wildflowers and uh, just delightful, you know. What had been this horrible space for kids to play in suddenly became a delight. It's quite a long time ago now, but I'd still like to thank everyone for their support. Phil and Jenny for, <laughs> for putting up with me for the whole journey. Uh, that can't have been easy. And everyone that flew out, you know who you are and thank you. And if you noticed a small yellow sunflower on the front of my bike. That was in memory of Jamie Thompson. Thank you for watching. I'm sorry there was no art in this one. I hope it wasn't too boring for you. Remember, click the thumbs up. It's down there somewhere. Subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. So uh, the sign's written in English on one side and German on the other. And it pretty much says, caution cyclist ahead. Don't run him over. Don't kill him.